Yo, what up, YouTube? This is the Truth Barrel One speaking, and today I want to spend some time talking about the other side of the single mom issue. Now, this is pretty much old news by now, but um, y'all know the rapper Jay Quan, and I'm pretty sure by now most most of you've heard about the uh, about his situation with him being being in jail. After for not paying child support for a kid that he later found out wasn't even his. Uh, I was I was actually supposed to make a video about this like a long a long time ago, uh, but I guess I kept kept getting distracted, kept getting off course. So I'm so I'm, so I'm just do do it now, <clears throat> and um, I'm gonna read this article. Um, I'm gonna read this article about about the situation now. You know them. Off my commentary on it. Um, now the the title of the article is "Rapper Jaquan Jailed for Child Support. Child Wasn't His." Okay, here's the article. Hip Hop News Twenty Four Seven recently interviewed rapper Jaquan about his interesting child support situation. During an interview with Miss Georgia, Jay Quan informed listeners that he'd been paying $2,500 per month in child support for seven years for a child that was eventually determined not to be his. <clears throat> the artist goes on to say that he was jailed for not making the child support payments which derailed his entire career by killing his ability to earn income. Uh, okay, for, okay, first of all, uh, <laughs> I think Jay Kwan may be giving himself a little bit too much credit on that one. Personally. But, uh, but that's besides the point. Anyway, back to the article. <clears throat> he also said that when it was determined that he wasn't the child's father, the courts provided no remedies whatsoever to him to retrieve the tens of thousands of dollars he paid over a seven year period. Jay Kwan is now saying that he plans to start a foundation for fathers who are having their rights violated by the child support system. I support this initiative because many of us forget about the millions of fathers out there who are doing all they can to have access to their kids and trying to do the right thing but are left alienated by deceptive mothers in a court system that would rather see a man in jail than with his own children. Jay Kwan went on to mention that he'd allowed the mother of his child to live in a house he owned, and he also claims that she was destroying court paperwork as it came to the house. So based on my interpretation of the interview, it seems that the artist is implying that the woman might have been might have been a long term mate and that she may have also been concerned about him finding out that he wasn't the father. Whether her alleged deception was out of her desire to maintain her relationship with Jaquan or for her own financial benefit or both, it's hard to tell. Here are some quick thoughts on the J on the Jaquan child support situation particularly as it pertains to black fathers all across America. 1. If this woman deceives him for years and calls him to be incarcerated, she needs to be put on trial and possibly sent to jail. She helped take away his freedom, so her freedom should be reconsidered as well, at least according to the rules under which she has chosen to play. 2. I am not sure why the courts somehow feel that a child is better off when his father is in jail than when he is out making money to take care of his family. An incarcerated man can't spend time with his children. He can't make a living to pay child support and he also has a hard time getting a job for the rest of his life because of our nation's draconian treatment of, conv of convicted felons. The child support system destroys millions of families across America and is in desperate need of reform. 3. The Jay Kwan child support story is played out all across America in millions of households. 
There are also countless instances of parental alienation experienced by fathers dealing with co-parents who've decided that they have the right to be dictators over the father-child relationship. When people go to the club and get tipsy, the name of Jaquan's most famous song, and then choose to lie down and have sex with someone, they must realize that a child produced from that relationship was created by two people, not one. So, kicking the father out of a child's life because you somehow don't approve of his parenting skills is not sufficient justification for destroying your child's future. For some reason, many parents have become so focused on their own selfish need for love and adulation that their children become emotional accessories with the child's best interest being completely thrown to the wayside. Men like Eric Leggett, Leggett what, help fathers to find ways to be involved with the lives of their children. Leggett also helps them to protect their rights when it comes to issues like visitation and child support. The point is not to say that every single mother in America is somehow corrupt or malevolent mal mal in her motives. It is to say that the story of the irresponsible black man who loves to abandon his kids is one of the urban legends to which we've become collectively addicted. Key point. Okay, rest of the article. Yes, there are some seriously trifling fathers, but to argue that black male irresponsibility is the sole reason for the breakdown of the African American family is reckless, weak, and unthoughtful. Personally, as, a, as an 18-year veteran of the child support system myself, I can understand Jaquan's issues up close. There's nothing like struggling to find airspace in the life of your child with the threat of incarceration hanging over your head in the event that you can't pay anymore. The child support system has become America's debtor's prison. And that's that's the that's the whole article. That's the article. Now the reason I chose to um discuss this article is it's not because of J it's not because of it's not really because of Jay Kwan specifically. After I think the guy the guy's pretty much uh <laughs> the guy's pretty much I think the guy's pretty much a dumbass for for paying child support on a kid without getting a DNA test. I'm just saying that. I, I, as a celebrity, he should know. He should know better. I mean, I feel sympathy for the guy, but damn, I don't know how he. I don't, he just took this girl. This girl's word for it that he was the father. That was a stupid move. Stupid move. Hell, even if he wasn't a celebrity, I still. I, he, he said he should, he should be cautious of any woman that says that. That says that. That says that stuff. Especially with so many trifling females nowadays. Especially, especially a lot of them in our community. But that's besides the point. The main point I put this article is to focus on the other side. It, it fo looks at the other side of the single, of the single mom debate, um, particularly in the particularly in the black community. The side we don't hear about too often. The side of where we, of the of the men of the men who do who do their best to be involved in their kids as much as possible, but. But because of um, their relationship to some these vindictive mothers, these these women try their best try their best to stop that at any cost. I mean, this part of the article sums it up best. <clears throat> it it uh, the point is not to say that every single mother in America is somehow corrupt or malevolent in her motives. It is to say that the story of the irresponsible black man who loves to abandon his kids is one of the urban legends to which we've become collectively addicted. Now that's what it's really about. And I think I've said this before that whenever the issue of single mother motherhood is discussed, especially in the black community, the discussion is always phrased and it's always phrased from the female perspective. The discussion is usually female-centered, 
and because of that we only hear this side of the story and we know that women women are, are only gonna tell you what they want you to know so you only hear about the stories about the dudes who just up and leave their kids and families because they don't give a shit but you almost never hear about hear about the men who who make who make all who make all the effort to be in the kids' lives, but are deep, but are sabotaged by the by the mother by the mother of the kids, because there are some women who there are there are some women who who intentionally drive a wedge between a father and and the children, out of out of personal vindictiveness. But you never hear it. You never see those stories on the news. You never see any documentaries about that. And let me clarify, I'm talking about the brothers who who make every effort to be in their kids' lives. Not the not the sorry ass niggas who make kids and then bounce and don't, and don't even try to take care of them. I'm talking about the former group. The brothers who try. But we only hear about the second group. And there are a lot of men, a lot of brothers who are in the first group. We never hear those stories. But I'm convinced that that's not by accident or mistake. I believe that's per that's purposeful. That that is that that's by design. Because those stories don't cater to the female ego, the black female ego. You see, because mainstream media is designed to portray single mothers as victims, even if they're not. So all the stories that contradict the victimhood of single mothers is selectively tuned out and overlooked. And that goes double for anything concerning the black community. Like we always get stats thrown at us saying like uh, about like what is it? What is it like? Seventy percent of black children are born out of wedlock, or is it or something like seventy percent of black children are are grow, um, grow up in sing, single mo single mother home single mother homes and stuff. And that's and that's the black and that's all the black man's fault. But okay, first of all, just because a child was born out of wedlock, or, or just because a child grow, lives with his mother, does not mean that the father is not involved in that child's life. Now let's get that straight. Just because a child is born out of wedlock, or lives with his mother, does not mean that the father is not involved in that child in that child's life. The reason I say this is because I see these stati these stats. They get it's like they get they get thrown at black men because they're like. Because they try to make children, black children who were born out of wedlock or who lived with their mother, synonymous with, with with black children who were abandoned. Totally, that's not the same. But I hear it a lot. Like I hear it like they're used interchangeably when they're not. I hear these stats repeated all the time to some, as if to somehow prove that most black men abandon their kids. When that's not the when that's not the case. Those stats do not indicate which men, which fathers abandon their kids, and which ones stay, and which ones stay with their kids. They simply tell you the condition of the child's birth or who the child lives with. That's it. Anything else is just is just people reading into it. But I have to disagree with the writer of this article when he says, writes, the child support system destroys millions of families across America and is in desperate need of reform. And well, I agree with the second part. It does need to be reformed, but I, oh, but as far as destroying millions of families, I can't place all that on the child support system. It contributes to the destruction of families, but it's not. It is not. The, I cannot say it's the sole factor. Parental irresponsibility is. Now the article says that Jaquan claims to start a foundation for fathers, um, to fight for their rights as parents and. And I th that's a good thing. I hope he go. I hope he does do it. I hope he goes through it because, like, because the other side of the story needs to be told. And most importantly, we need to fix this perception of black men just just being natu naturally more have a natural have a natural tendency to just abandon their kids more than anybody else. So I hope that Jaquan is serious about this because we because we. Because we need, because we need this. This really, this issue need, really needs to be addressed. The other side of the issue really needs to be addressed. And uh, that concludes my analysis of the article. Um, I'll try to put the link up in the description box so you can read it yourself. This has been a public service, public service announcement by Truth Bearer One. Peace out.